Good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a privilege to be here to speak uh, on behalf of the CCA. Every time I hear Mark speak about that and anyone else, I think it's almost overwhelming at the amount of, of information. That, it's not just data, but it's, it's, it's coming from everywhere. It's like the ocean boiling. And, it, it, you know, as a business kind of stakeholder as you are, you think, what do I do with all this? How do I deal with it? So, uh, I'm kind of proud to say one of the roles that an association can provide, your local association, the national, national association, is instead of boiling the ocean, you kind of reach in with a bucket, you pull out one bucket at a time, and you do your best to do things at that level, at that provincial level or national level, that's pretty hard to do inside your site trailer. Right? Certain things you can control on the site, certain things you really can't get at, and it's the sort of thing Mark's talking about. So instead of boiling the ocean, associations and that, the, the, the work we do together, we, we take the ocean one bucket at a time, focus on something, and try to find an action that helps the industry kind of move ahead a little bit. So that's, uh, I'm kind of proud to be in that role. It's a real privilege to be here to, to uh, share some of the things that, that we do. A, a bit of a trick question. How many of you here are members of the Canadian Construction Association? Thing. It's kind of cool to me. I, I, you sort of open up your phone and it would pop up a, stand, a, a letter. 
which was addressed to your, so if I put in my home uh, postal code, I live in Jackson's Point, Ontario, if you know where that is. No. So it's a little tiny village up near you know, like Simple. So you, you hit the button, it'll populate a letter addressed to my local member of parliament with a CCA kind of template letter, which you can adjust if you'd like to. And so a thousand of these letters were sent on a pretty quick campaign. Maybe not, not as many as you'd like, there's 20,000 of members like us in, in the CCA. So a thousand of these went out in a short period. But that's the sort of advocacy tool that uh, the CCA is trying to mobilize. Uh, I, I think there was a pretty good amount of support from, from the Atlantic provinces, certainly from Newfoundland and there. But that's a, that's a good example of the sorts of things that, that can start to have an impact uh, over time. They also, the uh, federal government, as you expect, they love to hear from people, individuals. It's great for the association to call. It's better for Mark. That are Ray calls and says, hey, Sal, you know, like, you remember I went to your barbecue last week? Well, you know, that kind of personalized message is really, really important as well. So the more of that that, that we, can, uh, we can do together, uh, the, the better. Another advocacy area, this one kind of gets my goat a little bit, so I may, I may go on a bit. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, community benefits. So federal government spends, uh, in terms of direct construction spending, they add up the, cost, the value of their products that they, that they they procure on their own. Two percent or something like that, relatively small overall construction. So you think, well, why is that to get the government of Canada actually moving the dial for us? Why, why are we doing this? So it's easy to, to misunderstand the, the impact. You think about the federal government as setting things like tax policy, immigration policy. Remember Mark's point about we can't grow enough talent in, in the country. We're going to need to bring in people from the front. Well, immigration policy drives that. Right, so the federal government deals with that, 2% spending, but they set the framework that everyone else operates in. And so that's, the advocacy is directed at that framework to be sure that they don't, frankly, screw it up for the rights that they're trying to get it done at the local and municipal level. So that's, that's kind of a key point. Um, they're also an investor, right? So they, they set the rules of the, of the table, but the government's an investor. So as, again, as Mark was saying, even though they're only spending 2% directly, they're spending 200 billion and they're you know, kind of mobilizing capital from around the world into our economy. So if, if you think of the government not just as a rule maker, but they're the investor. They are the private investor. Who are they investing for? Who owns them? You. I think they work for me personally, right? They're, right? So it's my money to speak, so for an investor. If you think of it that way, that's why the advocacy starts to, to really, uh, really pick up. So community benefits. I mentioned that they don't seem under government doesn't seem to understand why this is important. So they've taken a social program um, and uh, sort of the value of including the benefits from local communities, and, and they sort of targeted construction, it seems, in the last couple of years, and said, well, you guys need to do more for your communities. If you think about it, how many of you already support local communities that you live in? Right? You're, you've got a baseball club, you've got a local arts team, you're, you're on the board, the hospital board, all the volunteer. There's an enormous amount of contribution that we already make. You move into a, a project in Corner Brook or wherever it happens to be, you now bring people to the site. You're buying service, you're buying it's an awful lot of economic activity. So the government seems to have missed the fact that the, the construction industry already contributes an enormous amount, an outsized amount, of benefit to communities. So all that aside, we've kind of moved now to this idea, well, you know what? When you bid a project, we're going to give you the plans and specifications. We want a price for that, please. But in addition, on this other page, we'd like you to list all the other stuff that you're going to do for free. For free, right? The, the community benefits. Tell us what else you're going to do for us. And then when we evaluate the bids, we're going to compare those. Now we're competing. So imagine you're competing against him on a job, but you don't really know what the full scope is. I know this sounds bizarre, but this is what, there was a bill before the, 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 before the Commons last year that we shouted down, us and others, the CCA and others, shouted this bill down. But really was a requirement on federal work to bid to kind of an unknown, non-transparent scope of community benefits. And we challenged government, so what are these things? What sorts of things are supposed to be on our list? And they said, punch to God, they said, we don't really know. We were hoping that through this process, you would teach us what these things are. So you can imagine, so this is now flowing out across the country. I don't know how much of this you see it in We sort of see it in Ontario, BC, Manitoba, Alberta, all across the country. As, as municipalities and provinces see this trend, they go, oh my God, this is a great political tool. So I, we can now add a community benefits requirement for my local school job, for my local you know, uh, squash board, whatever. 
So we're starting to see this kind of proliferation of this community benefits concept through the market, especially if there's federal dollars attached. Because I feel pretty chummy with this concept. So I, you can t I get a little wound up about this because it violates what at least seems to me, it violates this idea of transparent, fair, level playing field competition in the industry. Right? If, if you can see it, you can bid it. Right? If, you, if you know what it is, if you can price it, you can bid it fairly. But if you can't see it and you're boxing its shadows in this process, that's a problem, a systemic problem for the construction industry. It's starting at the federal level and it's cascading down. So this is one of those areas. This is one of those areas where CCA is quite active and trying desperately to just kind of stem the tide of some of this. Let me give you one last example because I get worked up about this. Sorry. <laughs> the federal <laughs> Is it just a little bit too much? So the federal minister of, uh, of public services and procurement, new, new minister, that the election got got her mandate left. Do you guys read these things? Go on the on, on the the services website and look, read the mandate letter. Let me read you a, 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 read a sentence that says, create a new target, target, that at least 5% of the federal contracts are awarded to businesses managed and led by indigenous peoples. Huh. Okay, so so this is, we're now targeting awards of contracts. So now you're in a competition. I don't know what sort of indigenous owned businesses happen to be in in corner work. I don't, you know, maybe there's lots, maybe there aren't. But imagine you're now competing against in that environment. Is that playing field level? I'm not talking about whether it's good or bad socially. It's not, I'm not making a moral point here. Just in terms of level playing field competition. This, they're now introducing targeted awards. Targeted <coughs> Okay, this is not maybe the trend that we want to see in the future. And it's, it's, it's in the mandate letter. We're not making this stuff up. You couldn't make this up. So, this is, uh, the CCA's had a long history of sort of policy opposing these kind of targets. And it, it's, again, it's not, a, it's not a moral question. If you said, well, 5% indigenous, great. What about all of the other underrepresented uh, stakeholders that are in the industry? It applies equally to all of that. They've picked out this, why? Because you need the truth and reconciliation mandate filled from the last, right? So this is, you can see the Pollock poly spinning this one. But it, it's so it's long in so many areas. So this is the kind of thing that if, if you're sitting in your, in your office or your site trailer, you know, in, in, uh, in St. John's, maybe it's not obvious why this matters to you. But this is the sort of thing the CCA tries to do at that national level. You kind of beat away at these issues so that, so that first you're aware of them. But you try to avoid this, this, this cascading and these crazy kind of, of, of processes that, that make our lives difficult. So that's... Uh, Enough on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even work out about that. Um, so, uh, investor confidence. This is just one example. There's lots of these things. So this is not about the, uh, the Trans Mountain Pipeline as the example, because it's a nice fit for the example. So, uh, associations like ours and yours, we're not in the business of building pipelines, not what we do. Uh, but projects at this, this scale, when there's uncertainty around what are the rules of engagement, what are the environmental requirements? What are the what are the uh, uh, the requirements for engagement with, in this case, the indigenous community? When those rules are not clear, and then there's this threat that a job ought to be stalled or taken off the table, hanging over the job really for, for years. If you're an outside investor trying to do what Mark needs us to do, right? Like, how do you look at that? Jeez, you know, if I have choices, if Canada's a place, and I've maybe got France and I've got the U.S. You know, do you come to Canada and invest your trillion dollars into this environment, knowing that, as, as Kinder Morgan did, they made that call, right? They invested, they hung in there. What did they end up doing? They threw the keys, right? Well, they, they, them, they threw you the keys. Right? You and I own, we own, we own the chance now. Did you know that? We own the pipeline. So this is this is not like that the investor cut is a problem, right? So again, we're not sort of advocating for the pipeline. It's not pipelines are good. The message is that there needs to be sort of a rational process around this so investors have predictability, right? You can look at Canada's place, you know what? We can be confident putting money, we know the rules, they're not gonna change. That's the messaging that we're trying to advance at, at the at the national level. The the uh, related point on this, the, the Alberta uh, local association a year ago, this is just an example of how we kind of work together. The Alberta Association uh, became aware of 
groups active in Alberta opposing the pipeline. And the money was not coming from Canada. The money was coming from offshore, right? So it looked like a local, a group, bunch of local folks with their placards and they're all sort of storming. But when you had to kind of peel back, the money was coming from the US, coming from Europe, coming from China, all over the place. So they, they kind of pushed the button on this. Came to the CCA and said, hey, we need a policy statement. We need some kind of a, of a, of a formal statement that we shouldn't do this. It's one thing for local Canadian people to take a position, great. But let's oppose the idea of foreign money coming in under the, under the banner of Canadian local interest group fighting you know, our policy battles for us. So, so last May, the CCA board passed a resolution adopting that, 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 that policy statement. So it's just words, right? It's just words, but words are kind of important and they, they kind of lead the direction on, on some of these things. So it's a good example of where a, you know, kind of a regional issue it's hard to solve it at the regional, but it kind of got kicked up at the national level, working together, you can kind of move along with some of those things. Let me give you another example of the uh, of the advocation. I, I don't know if you see these reprisals, so-called reprisal calls. These are the ones where the owner says, look, if you have a claim against me on this job, and you want to sue me to recover your million dollar claim, you may be banned from bidding any other work for me until we resolve that. So you have a contractual right to pursue your claim. You have a right to the court system to enforce that claim. But the contract says if you do any of that, you're right. You don't get to bid the rest of the, to be able to the job. So what happens you know, if you're a company? What do, what do you do? So you can just tell and see people squirming. So that's the re reprisal clause issue. So there was a, a kind of now infamous case in BC, City of Burnaby. They had this thing. It went up through the, 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 the courts of appeal in BC. Contractor lost. I don't give you the reasons, but I'm not a lawyer. But the, the, essentially, the, the BC Court of Appeal found in favor of the city of Burnaby. It said, for a bunch of reasons, it's okay for municipalities to say, you can't sue me or I'll ban you from bidding. That's okay. So the BC Association, right, Monica Counterpart, called CCA and said, okay, <laughs> this is crazy. We're going to try to get me to appeal the Supreme Court of Canada to get this turned back. So CCA jumped on, on board. We, we participated in the funding and some of the thought process and sought leave to appeal. Well, the Supreme Court, in its wisdom, decided not to hear the appeal in December. So as, a, as it stands at the moment, that, that's the law in BC, but it's not the law in Canada, because the Supreme Court did not listen to the case. So in BC, that, that's now good law. The next kind of issue, so this is an issue, it's a live issue, right? And you can imagine municipalities in Newfoundland, a lot of are looking at this going, huh, I'd love to have a hammer over this guy. I'd love to, you know, to, to change the leverage in your, in your, as you're negotiating your final settlement contract. <coughs> so again, it's kind of a nationalist issue. It, it's a Supreme Court type issue, but but it's something that it's very hard for you to handle a site trip, right? And none of us has that skill or the resources to fight the battle. So the associations can kind of push that push that kind of agenda uh, where we can. Uh, infrastructure. This is a, a report card. CCA, uh, among five or six other national bodies, uh, has this is the third or fourth iteration of this thing, version of this thing, that really just does a scan of the sorts of things Mark talked about. What's the state of infrastructure across the country? Uh, how, how much of it is aging? How much of it is, is just not there? How much of it is now obsolete? And so on. Um, it, it won't dwell on it, but it's the sort of it, it's a resource that uh, it's available to all, all the members. We want to kind of find it for you if you need to, uh, to find it. But if you're talking with to people trying to show data, in addition to Mark's data, saying here's the problem, we need to invest more money. This this is not a bad resource to uh, to, to use. Uh, we talked a bit about workforce. Well, we Mark talked a bit about workforce, and I'm going to need some help, Adele, because this is somewhere around here is where this video is supposed to play, and I'm not going to dance. So it's on your next slide. I'm oh, that's pretty great. sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, so if it marks dwell a little bit, I won't, I won't dwell on the, on the challenge, but um, at, at, at kind of a national level, we are trying to figure out how to support the local efforts of, of uh, your local association here and across the country. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, the, the drive is, is diverse, skilled, tech savvy, I pick up that point that, that Mark's made before. Um, and trying to tell a storyline, I think somebody made the, it might be you, Rob, made the point about the emotional connection is required. So, you know, it's early days. We're, you know, we're not the Academy uh, of Motion Pictures here, but we are trying to develop a bit of an emotional appeal to support what you're doing here. So, I, you, you, this, you can tell that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they sort of targeted construction, it seems, in the last couple of years. They said, well, you guys 
need to do more for your communities. If you think about it, how many of you already support local communities that you live in? Right? You're, you've got a baseball club, you've got a local arts team, you're, you're on a, or the hospital board, all the volunteer. There's an enormous amount of contribution that we already make. You move into a, a project in Corner Brook or wherever it happens to be, you now bring people to the site. You're buying services, you're buying goods. So, awful lot of economic activity. So, the government seems to have missed the fact that, that the construction industry already contributes an enormous amount, an outsized amount, of benefit to communities. So, all that aside, we kind of move now to this idea, well, you know what, when you bid a project, we're going to give you the plans and specifications. We want a price for that, please. But in addition, on this other page, we want you to list all the other stuff that you're going to do for free. For free, right? The, the community benefits. Tell us what else you're going to do for us. And then when we evaluate the bids, we're going to compare those. Now we're competing. So imagine you're competing against them on a job, but you don't really know what the full scope is. I know this sounds bizarre, but this is what, there was a bill before the, 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 before the Commons last year that we shouted down, us and others, the CCA and others, shouted this bill down, but it really was a requirement on federal work to bid to kind of an unknown, non-transparent scope of community benefits. And we challenged government, so what are these things? What sorts of things are supposed to be on our list? And they said, honest to God, they said, we already know. We were hoping that through this process, you would teach us what these things are. So, you can imagine, so, this is now flowing out across the country. I don't know how much of this you see in Newfoundland. We sort of see it in Ontario, BC, Manitoba, Alberta, all across the country. As, as municipalities and provinces see this trend, they go, oh my God, this is a great political tool. So I, we can now add a community benefits requirement for my local school job, for my local you know, uh, squash board, whatever. So we're starting to see this kind of proliferation of this community benefits concept through the market, especially if there's federal dollars attached, because they feel pretty chummy with this concept. So I, you can I get a little wound up about this because it violates what at least seems to me, it violates this idea of transparent, fair, level playing field competition in the industry. Right? If, if you can see it, you can bid it. Right? If, you, if you know what it is, you can price it, you can bid it fairly. But if you can't see it, and you're boxing in shadows in this process, that's a problem, a systemic problem for the construction industry. It's starting at the federal level and it's cascading down. So this is one of those areas, if I can hit the, this is one of those areas where CCA is quite active and trying desperately to kind of stem the tide of some of this. Let me give you one last example because I get worked up about this. Sorry. The, 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 the federal um, <laughs> Is it just <laughs> uh, we're all doing it? <laughs> The Federal Minister of, uh, of Public Services and Procurement, new, new minister, she got the election, got, got her mandate list. Do you guys read these things? Go on the, on, on the Public Services website and look, read the mandate letter. Let me read you a, 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 read a sentence that says, create a new target, target, so that at least 5% of federal contracts are awarded to businesses managed and led by indigenous peoples. Huh. Okay. So, so this is, we're now targeting in, Awards of contracts. So now you're in a competition. I don't know what sort of indigenous owned businesses happen to be in, in Cornerbrook. I don't, you know, maybe there's lots, maybe there aren't. But imagine you're now competing against in that environment. Is that playing field level? I'm not talking about whether it's good or bad socially. It's not, I'm not making a moral point here. Just in terms of level playing field competition. This, they're now introducing targeted awards. Targeted <coughs> Okay, this is not maybe the trend that we want to see in the future, and it's, it's, it's in the mandate letter. We're not making this stuff up, it's, you couldn't make this up. So, this is, uh, the CCA's had a long history of, of sort of policy opposing these kind of targets. And it, it's, again, it's not, a, it's not a moral question. If you said, well, 5% indigenous, great, what about all of the other underrepresented uh, stakeholders that, that aren't in the industry? It applies equally to all of that. They've picked out this one. Why? Because you need the truth and reconciliation mandate filled from the last, right? So this is, you can see the Pollock poly spinning this one. But it, it's so it's long in so many areas. So this is the kind of thing that if, if you're sitting in your, in your office or your site trailer, you know, in, in, uh, in St. John's, maybe it's not obvious why this matters to you. But this is the sort of thing the CCA tries to do with that national level. You kind of beat away at these issues so that, so that first you're aware of them. You try to avoid this, this, this Cascading in these crazy kind of, of, of processes that, that make our lives difficult. So that's uh, enough on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt.
workouts about that. Um, so uh, investor confidence, this is just one example. There's lots of these things. This is not about the, uh, the Trans Mountain Pipeline as the example, because that's, it's a nice fit for the example. So uh, associations like ours and yours, we're not in the business of building pipelines, not what we do. Uh, but projects at this, this scale, when there's uncertainty around what are the rules of engagement, what are the environmental requirements? What are the what are the uh, uh, the requirements for engagement with, in this case, the indigenous community? When those rules are not clear, and then there's this threat that a job ought to be stalled or taken off the table, hanging over the job really for, for years. If you're an outside investor trying to do what Mark needs us to do, right? Like, how do you look at that? Jeez, no. If I have choices, if Canada's a, a place, and I've maybe got France, and I've got the U.S., you know. Do you come to Canada and invest your trillion dollars into this environment, knowing that, as, as Kinder Morgan did, they made that call, right? They invested, they hung in there. What did they end up doing? They threw the keys, right? Well, they, they, them, they threw you the keys to Canada, right? You and I own, we own, we own the chance now. Did you know that? We own the pipeline. So this is this is not like the investor this is a problem, right? So again, we're not sort of advocating for the pipeline. It's not pipelines are good. The message is that there needs to be sort of a rational process around this so investors have predictability, right? You can look at Canada's place, you know what? We can be confident putting money, we know the rules, they're not gonna change. That's the messaging that we're trying to advance at, at the at the national level. The the uh, the related point on this, the, the Alberta uh, local associations a year ago, this is just an example of how we kind of work together. The Alberta Association uh, became aware of groups active in Alberta opposing the pipeline, and the money was not coming from Canada. The money was coming from offshore, right? So it looked like a local, a group, bunch of local folks with their placards and they're all sort of storming. But when you had to kind of peel back, the money was coming from the U.S., coming from Europe, coming from China, all over the place. So they, they kind of push the button on this, came to the CCA and said, hey, we need a policy statement, we need some kind of a, of, a, of a formal statement that we shouldn't do this. It's one thing for local Canadian people to take a position, great, but let's oppose the idea of foreign money coming in under the, under the banner of Canadian local interest group fighting you know, our policy battles for us. So, so last May, the CCA board passed a resolution adopting that, 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 that policy statement. So it's just words. Right? It's just words, but words are kind of important and they, they kind of lead the direction on, on some of these things. So it's a good example of where a, you know, kind of a regional issue is hard to solve it at the regional, but it kind of got kicked up at the national level working together you kind of move along with some of these things. Let me give you another example of the, uh, of the advocation deck. I don't know if you see these reprisals, so-called reprisal ones. These are the ones where the owner says, look, if you have a claim against me on this job and you want to sue me to recover your million dollar claim, you may be banned from bidding any other work for me until we resolve that. So you have a contractual right to pursue your claim. You have a right to the court system to enforce that claim. But the contract says if you do any of that, you're right. You don't get to bid the rest of the, to be able to job. So what, you know, if you're a country, what do you, what do you do? So you can just tell, you can see people squirming. So that's the reprisal clause issue. So there was a, a kind of now infamous case in BC, city of Burnaby, they had this thing. It went up through the uh, courts of appeal in BC, contractor lost. I don't give you the reasons, but I'm not a lawyer, but the, the, essentially the, the BC Court of Appeal found in favor of the city of Burnaby. They said for a bunch of reasons, it's okay for municipalities to say, you can't sue me or I'll ban you from bidding. That's okay. So the BC Association, right, Monson Counterpart, called CCA and said, okay, this is crazy. We're going to try to get me to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada to get this turned back. So CCA jumped on, on board, we, we participated in the funding and some of the thought process and sought leave to appeal. Well, the Supreme Court, in its wisdom, decided not to hear the appeal in December. So as, of, as it stands at the moment, that, that's the law in BC, but it's not the law in Canada because the Supreme Court did not listen to the case. So in BC, that, that's now good law. The next got a different view. So this is an issue, it's a live issue, right? You can imagine municipalities in Newfoundland and Labrador looking at this going, huh, I'd love to have a hammer over this guy. I'd love to, you know, to, to put, change the leverage in your, in your, as you're negotiating your final settlement contract. <coughs> so again, it's kind of a nationalist issue. It, it's a Supreme Court type issue, but, but it's something that it's very hard for you to handle a site trip. 
right? And not just has that skill or the resources to fight the battle. So the associations can kind of push that, push that kind of agenda uh, where we can. Uh, infrastructure. This is a, a report that CCA, uh, among five or six other national bodies, uh, has. This is the third or fourth iteration of this thing, version of this thing. That really just does a scan of the sorts of things Mark talked about. What's the state of infrastructure across the country? Uh, how, how much of it is aging? How much of it is, is just not there? How much of it is now obsolete? And so on. Um, it, don't dwell on it, but it's the sort of it, it's a resource that uh, it's available to all, all the members. We want to kind of find it for you if you need to, uh, to find it. But if you're talking with, to people trying to show data, in addition to Mark's data, saying here's the problem, we need to invest more money. This this is not a bad resource to uh, to, to use. Uh, we talked a bit about workforce. Well, we, Mark talked a bit about workforce. And I'm going to need some help, Adele, because this is somewhere around here is where this video is supposed to play, and I'm not going to dance. So. It's on your next slide, I'm oh, pretty right. sure, yeah. Um, so, um, so if Mark's dwelled a little bit, I won't, I won't dwell on the challenge, but um, at, at, at kind of the national level, we are trying to figure out how to support the local efforts of, of uh, your local association here and across the country. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, the, the drive is, is diverse, skilled, tech savvy. I pick up that point that, that Mark's made before. Um, and in trying to tell a storyline, I think somebody made it, it might be you, Rob, made the point about the emotional connection is required. So, you know, it's early days. You know, we're not the Academy uh, of Motion Pictures here, but we are trying to develop a bit of an emotional appeal to support what you're doing here. So, I, you, you, you can tell that's it. <laughs> they told me I they told me I wasn't crazy enough. They told me I should get a desk job. Let one word for them. It's high tech. It's human. It's creative. It's innovative. It's everything you didn't think it was. And it's all around you. <laughs> Fits here. Diversity fits here. Creativity fits here. Curiosity fits here. Canada's construction industry. Talent fits, fits here. here. Things like this, and you get a pocket on a flash drive, not bad, right? It gives you something, it gives you a little bit of a profile. So that's the kind of thing that's it's available, and as I said, there's more of this coming, and I think there's a little more interaction. So that's the kind of thing that we're trying to push along. Um, just kind of keeping up the pace here. Uh, on the innovation front, um, there's a perception, I'm going to fight about this a little bit with, with folks, but the, people say the construction industry is not, not productive. I say, well, there's a perception that it's not productive. It may not be true, but there's a perception around that. So um, we, it, it's something we've been struggling with for a little while. We've got a program um, that is trying to match entrepreneurs uh, from across Canada with uh, industry leaders. It's a bit of a mentoring type type program. So we've got uh, uh, been 30 or 40 applications already have been have been approved, and uh, there's, like, there's 15 or so people running through the program right now. We've also uh, partnered with the University, uh, with the Ottawa Construction Association and Carleton University on uh, on similar kinds of mentoring and, and trying to be at this sort of active focus on, on on individual people getting into mentoring roles that allow them to, to kind of understand the innovation. Um, we've also got a relationship with uh, the, the, the construction the Canadian Construction Innovation CCI, uh, which is. It, to, to be candid, struggles a little bit. It's mandates a little bit fuzzy, but at least there's an effort there. It's one of those areas, it's not like a video, it's not quite that flashy, but there's an effort in the CCA book to try to, to support some of that thing. Uh, some of that stuff. We've also got, we've heard of um, uh, scientific research and experimental development tax credits, shred credits. I don't know if you've seen these things, but they're available to you in certain, uh, uh, in certain criteria. 
The CCA has an arrangement affiliation with a firm called Invent, uh, Invent Business Inc. That's, it's a bit of an affinity type program. It's available. You can make the call. They've got a package of deals. You can you know, help you put the shred credit together, make a submission, and if you're eligible, you, you can do that kind of thing. So these, these sorts of things, I won't dwell on them, but, they're, but there they are. I was fascinated. Rhonda mentioned to me, I think you've trademarked here a thing called Ecovation. Is that what you call it? Center of Ecovation. Center of Ecovation. So congratulations. <laughs> We're going to learn from you, obviously, but this, that, this is a very cool kind of thing. So. Um, let me just move on. I, I want to be sure we get to this. Uh, the, the last of those three points <coughs> at, at, at the beginning, the strategic things, were evolving the associated to remain relevant. So I won't go into a lot of detail here, but the, the significant milestone last year at CCA organizationally to, to adopt uh, a new structure, a new board structure, a new structure of engagement with members. So on, on, on whole, this I'm sure this helps you, but there's, there's out of the 20,000 members, the board of directors, it, it will be up to 20 people. There'll be up to 75 formal appointments to five national advisory councils. So the five sectors. Uh, the, the fifth one, the new one, is the local construction association, acknowledged for the first time in 100 years as being a, a relevant and important part of the national voice. So this is a good, a good deal. So that that structure will be uh, both uh, the, the, those positions will be uh, populated in March. Um, I just wanted to be sure. I, I want to just acknowledge that I, that I can. Talk about the nominees publicly because they've been posted on the site. People have been talking just to just so be aware of Newfoundland's role here. Uh, so, on the board, these are nominees, right? So, they'll be voted or not, especially when I tell you the first one who mentions Kevin McAvoy. You may or not, we're going to see. It depends on how his speech. But, so, that the, the Kevin will be nominated as one of the 20 board members. Uh, Rhonda Neary is, will be nominated to the Governance Committee, which kind of oversees the governance of the association. Uh, the, the, the Trade National Advisory uh, Council, uh, Derek Brown and Craig Drover would be uh, nominees there. Uh, the General Contractors Advisory Council, Rod Ackerman would be um, nominated into that group. Uh, and the uh, Local Construction Association National Advisory Council, the LCA Council, uh, Rhonda would be nominated into that group. So, a, you know, I think there's, I just rattled off six positions, five people. So it's not a, you know, it's a pretty good, uh, uh, Set of voices, I think, in there from from your from the province. So I think I know there's a concern here about representation as we move away from representatives to a governance style board. I think people, you know, are we going to have a voice here? So I think there's been a fair a fair effort to, to, to get that balance and be sure that the voice is strong in, in several different places. So I wanted to just mention that. If there are any questions around that structure, happy to, to take them afterwards. But. Uh, but yeah, just pass through. But but I think the idea is those are the nominees. They'll be on a slate. If you're uh, if you're going to come to San Diego to the AGM and the, the conference, I'd encourage you to do that uh, and you know have your say. The the structure of the board meetings will become closed. So in the past, the board's been open to hundreds of people, right? So the board meetings of twenty will be like your corporate board or board members will be in the meeting. They know it's a governance process. The national advisory councils are open to all. There'll be fifteen up to fifteen voting members, but. 50 people in the room, so it's, it's quite quite wide open. So, I know that was a bit of a whirlwind, um, but I, I, these are some of the options, I guess, to get well. I just really just want to thank you again for the opportunity to come out uh, and, and uh, share some of this. There's a lot going on, so we try to condense it, but I, I hope that gives you a sense of, of which buckets we're lifting out of the ocean. We're not trying to boil the ocean, we're just trying to lift a few out that are helpful to make the environment better for you to succeed. That's that's the that's the objective. I hope it's been helpful. I have to take a question or two if there are any. Uh, otherwise, that's it for me. Yeah. Can we ask you to move to the microphone there, just because of the video taping? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just in regards to the structure, I noticed that the Lean Association of Canada or whatever is is listed there. Is is that new or uh, what? Uh, so it, it's uh, it's transitioned. It's it's uh, existence has transitioned into a uh, an operating uh, service of the CCA. It used to have a standalone corporate yes. existence. It, it wasn't viable to be to be blunt. It wasn't viable economically. Uh, and so you CCA, we were subsidizing something that didn't work that well. So instead, we've got a more professionalized staff. You think of the, the staff of CCA sort of. And I'd be hard not. I don't mean to sound. Uh, majority here, but it, in, the, in the past, it tended to be sort of administrative, kind of moving things from one thing, but the volunteers did the work. The transition we're in now is a bit like you, you, professional staff who are professional government relations people, 
professional association folks who can actually run the business of the association. So as we move into that, that group is now able to deliver that service into the group part. That we don't need a separate organization that can't fund itself. So that's that's the group there. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. So, I just one, one more. The video you played. Yes. Uh, just suggest that I think everybody should be playing that at their office. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should get the link and copy of that. I, I don't disagree. I want it to be able to call and call yeah. and get the link. You've got the link. It's in the, it's in the PowerPoint. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your talk.